Well, if you look in the bulletins, it doesn't tell you what the title of the sermon is, so I guess that's still a mystery at this point. Um, Sharon, you put the verse from Proverbs, it says, what, can, what you can say can mean life or death. Those who speak with care will be rewarded. So you came up with that. Okay, so that's good. It fits. I just didn't realize where it came from. Thank you. Well, before I tell you what I'm going to preach about, I'll tell you a quick little story. There were four Christian men who were uh, meeting for lunch. And the one said to the others, Brothers, um, I think that we should, you know, all share with each other one of our, uh, one of our deep sins. And uh, just since I started this, I'll go first. And so he says, I have a real problem with buying lottery tickets. I'm kind of addicted to that. I'll go, I'll buy a few, scratch them off, I'll buy a few more. And they talked about that a little bit. And then the second guy shared his problem with lust, and they talked about that a little bit. And the third guy said, well, I really have a problem with jealousy. Jealous of my friends, of their jobs, or their um, talents, or their looks. And the fourth guy was just kind of sitting there in excitement. And they looked at him and waited for him. He says, I have a real problem with gossip. I can't wait to get out of here. Is it time to go yet? Uh-oh. Proverbs 2019, and then, by the way, that's our title today. That's what we're talking about is gossip. Proverbs 2019 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. And part of the reason I didn't have the sermon title in the bulletin is because I procrastinated, and part of it was because I wasn't quite sure I wanted to put my subtitle in. It's going to be gossip with the subtitle, Mind Your Own Business. And I'm not sure if that goes well in a bulletin. But um, as I think about it, I'm not meaning for it to be a harsh sermon title, but sort of a, a rule of thumb that many of us could take for ourselves as we talk to ourselves. For example, if you find yourself wanting to gossip, you say to yourself, Mind Your Own Business. I can say, Daryl, Mind Your Own Business. Um, I find myself being envious of others. Daryl, Mind Your Own Business. Doesn't matter what they have. You know, look to the Lord. If I find myself judging others, Daryl, mind your own business. So it's, that's, the, uh, that's what's meant by mind your own business. I'm sure the list could go on. Um, and if you're sitting here thinking, oh, he's talking about gossip. I wish so-and-so was here. Or he's talking about gossip. I hope she's getting this. Or he's getting this. Mind your own business. <laughs> Allow it to be for you. Um, most of us think of gossip, I think that we seriously think of gossip as the old days to get together and have tea and talk about everybody. Or we think of gossip as somebody else, but we don't very often think of gossip as something that we do. Or we certainly don't think of ourselves as gossips. Um, so why am I preaching on gossip? Um, I guess a while back, and I don't know how far back, I kind of had the idea that maybe at some point I'd talk about gossip and... Um, I have to confess it wasn't because I was looking at my own life. I think it was because I saw some other people. But in preparing the sermon, I've been challenged and convicted. Um, I also realized in preparing the sermon that I really didn't have what I needed to bring this message. And so, but I had already sort of started down that road that I was going to talk about gossip. So I met with Max Sook from uh, Locust Grove Mennonite. I met with Pastor Diller from uh, Mount View Mennonite. I met with Harold talked to a few other people, and so this is sort of um, a collection of wisdom gathered, commu a community conversation, and I'm bringing it, we're continuing the conversation here together. Um, so why do we gossip? Why do we want to gossip? Proverbs 26, 22 says, the words of gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the endless parts. And in the contemporary English version, it says, there's nothing so delicious as gossip. It melts in your mouth. So, there's an attraction to gossip. Um, one of the roots of gossip is that we want to put down others to make ourselves look good by comparison. Um, gossip would seem to be about the other person. Harold shared this with me. But really, it's about the gossiper. Because what you're trying to do is to deflect attention from yourself, not talk about yourself, talk about somebody else. So it's really about the gospel, even though it seems to be about the person you're talking about. The other thing is we like to be in the know. We like to be the one that shares information first. If there's a big national event, you know, like 
the space shuttle exploded, you'd like to be the first person to tell your friends the news. And we also, as people who struggle with gossip, may like to be the first to know something, to share something, to be in the know about what's going on in the community and tell other people about it. Um, in the scriptures, there's quite a few scriptures that talk about gossip. And I'm just going to read through a couple here, but what I'm going to start with is I want you to think about the company that gossip keeps. You know, they say you can sort of be known by the company you keep. Um, we have te we've had teenagers, we only have, our teenagers had friends. We're happy with the friends that they have. If they have bad friends, that probably says something about them. If they have good friends, it says something good about them. Becca has her friend Allison here today, and we feel very good about Becca's choice of friends. So, gossip, in these scriptures I'm going to read, think about the company that gossip keeps. Gossip isn't just harmless. It's not something that is just words. Doesn't really hurt anything, especially if they don't find out about it. Listen to this list of sins. We're going to start with Leviticus, where God is telling his people how to live at peace in the land. And he says, remember, here's the company that gossip keeps. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Don't swear falsely by my name. Profane the name of the Lord. Don't defraud or rob your neighbor. Hold back wages of the hired worker. Don't curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. Fear your God. Do not pervert justice or show partiality to the poor. Um, favoritism to the rich or partiality against the poor. Don't go about spreading slander. It's also translated gossip or be a talebearer among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate. And it goes on. In Romans 1.29, Paul says, Furthermore, just as they did not think it was worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They become filled with every kind of wickedness, greed, and depravity. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, and the list goes on. In 2 Corinthians, For I am afraid that when I come, I will not find you as I want to be. For I fear that there may be discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance and disorder. And in 2 Timothy, lastly, from the American Standard, but mark this, there will be terrible, time, terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, slanderous, malicious gossips, without self-control. Um, and the list goes on. So gossip isn't just not a big deal, it's a big deal. And you can tell that by the company it keeps. Um, again, Proverbs 20, 19 says, A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. And sort of have an ironic illustration of this. I'd like to help by um, five people, three youth and two more. Come on up, quick, quick, quick. Alex, Allison, Becca, Nathan, you can come help me. You don't have to do anything, but I just realized that I'm trying to relay what I overheard, and by the, name, the way the names have been changed to protect the guilty. You guys can sit down here, I'll call you up as, as, you're, uh, as I need you. There you go. Okay, so we've got person A, B, C, D, and E. And so this is what happened. A and B, you can come up here. Person and C, who's going to be C? You go stand over in the corner. You don't participate, but we're just going to talk about you. <laughs> so, who's A? You? Person A shares something with person B about person C. Go ahead. Pretend like you're telling yourself. All right. D, you're over here. As you might guess, <laughs> person B goes and tells person D what they learned about person C. Okay, stay there. Person A found out about it and wasn't too happy. Now, come on up, Logan. You can be here with Nathan. And so this is actually the con oh, yeah. this is actually the conversation I overheard. Person A complaining to person D or E, whatever he is. <laughs> person A complaining and saying, you know, I told person B about person C, and do you know they went and told person D about it? You have to be careful what you tell person B. True story. You guys can sit down. Thank you. Ironic illustration, what Proverbs 2019 says. Um, 
The gossip betrays the confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. Um, when we were still in college, uh, Colette had a friend who was telling her a lot about this other person, and for a while, Colette, you know, she didn't feel good about it, and she just stopped her, confronted her. They had a close enough relationship that she could confront her like this. And she said, you know what, just stop. Because I know if you're talking to me about them like that, that you're talking to them about us. And she was right, and the, the girl just broke down and started crying and was able to, I guess, address that in some way. So, and it just happened, that was Colette's wisdom, I just happened upon a Spanish proverb getting ready for this, and it says, whoever gossips to you will gossip about you. So if you hang out with gossips, be careful. So, Ephesians 4.29, Berger's going to put that up for us. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful. Helpful is a key word as you think about gossip. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every other form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Thanks, Bert. So, what is gossip? I think we always think of gossip what someone else does, not something that we do, um, and we certainly don't think of ourselves as a gossip. But my guess is, in that conversation that I overheard here, none of those persons would think that they were gossips or say that they were gossips or recognize that they had gossip, if you actually put it that way. So, that should give us all a pause to think, wait a minute, <coughs> if they might not have recognized that they were gossips, and it seemed kind of obvious, am I a gossip? It's kind of like when you're in a dream, and you don't know you're dreaming, and you're sure you're awake, and then you wake up, and oh, I really was dreaming. Or sometimes you even wonder, am I dreaming, or is this real? Nah, it's real, I know it's real, and then you wake up. For me, I've always had this fascination with tornadoes. Well, since I was little, I've always wanted to see a tornado. And every few, I don't know, six months, it just depends, I'll have this dream where I finally see a tornado. And in the dream, I always say, finally, I'm really seeing a tornado. This is not a dream. Finally. And I never can make the connection that it's a dream while I'm in the dream. And I think it should give us pause, and, and let's be honest, and as we talk about this subject, and ask ourselves, is it possible that I do gossip? We always think of it as something that someone else does. So what is gossip? The dictionary definition says it's idle talk or rumor, especially about the personal private affairs of others. As I talk to um, pastors and other people, um, so there's some other ways that we can define gossip. Anything that you say that puts another person in a negative or even in a questionable light would be gossip. Um, another rule of thumb that someone shares is that if you're not part of the problem, you're not part of the solution, and you probably don't need to be talking about it. If you were part of the problem, it may be something that you need to be talking about. If you're part of the solution, okay, that's appropriate, but otherwise, you probably don't need to be talking about it. Another rule of thumb would be, if you're having a conversation, you're not sure if you're crossing the line from just talking about, you know, good things or events of the day, um, and you're talking about somebody, would that conversation feel different if they were in the room? Or would you not even have the conversation if they were in the room? If you ask yourself that, that could be a, a good rule of thumb to know whether you cross the line into gossip. The other point from what we just read in Ephesians, is it helpful? If you're talking about something or you're thinking of talking about something, you can ask, is it helpful? Um, in Ephesians it said, only, um, but only talk about what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So another rule of thumb, you could ask yourself, is it helpful? The other thing, in saying what is gossip, part of gossip a lot of us don't recognize, listening to gossip is participating in gossip. It's encouraging that person, you're not trying to change the subject, you're allowing them to share, and this is where I've been guilty, particularly in the past, I might be saying to myself, I'm not going to pass it on, but at the same time, I'm not stopping them. And uh, so I participated, and I've been, I've been guilty of gossip in that way. 
Are there exceptions to these rules of thumb? There probably are. We obviously don't have time to go into detail what all, they all would be, but maybe you could sum it up by saying uh, if there's a need to know. If there's a need to know something, if someone has a need to know something, then maybe there'd be an exception to the, the little rules of thumb that we just mentioned. For example, when I was talking about this uh, recently with my brother and his wife back in Florida about 15 years ago or whatever, um, they needed some body work done on their car. And there was a guy who didn't come into the church, and he didn't. He was worked at a body shop where he had his own little business. But he was a crack addict. And um, nobody told my brother and wife that he had a problem with cocaine. And uh, I guess either people were uncomfortable saying that or they didn't want to gossip. You know, that's fine. But they said they sure would have appreciated knowing before they gave him the whole amount of money up front <laughs> based on the estimate. Um, they might have chose to handle that a little differently. So maybe they had a need to know. Maybe it been appropriate to, with the right heart, share that with them. If you knew they were getting body work done by a crack addict. But you don't want to go around telling everybody, Brother John's a crack addict. So that might be your exception. There's a need to know. So why is gossip so wrong? None of the scriptures treat it favorably. We can solve the company that it keeps. Um, first thing is the golden rule. Would you do unto others as you would have them do unto you? Would you want somebody talking about you, about your problems with other people? No. Gossip is unfair because it judges. And that's something I came to realize as I was trying to prepare this and I was talking to the pastors and others, that there's a real close connection between gossiping and judging. And when you gossip some, again, about someone, you're really judging them um, Harold told me that gossip is verbally relating personal judgments. Verbally relating personal judgments about others. Um, and it's unfair to judge someone in their absence. Even in our court system, when you judge somebody, you judge them in their presence. And there's a place in the church for working with someone who has an issue with the right heart, in love, through discernment. But you do it alongside them. You come alongside them and do it in their presence. You don't talk about them in their absence or judge them in their absence. They have an opportunity to respond. James 4, 11, 12 says, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them <coughs> speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you're not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, and it ain't you. Oh, no, he didn't say that. <laughs> There's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Um, and again, there is a place for discernment and for coming alongside a brother and helping them after we first take the plank out of our own eye. We do it directly. We do it in love. And we have a reason and a relationship to do that. Gossip is an easy alternative to having direct relationships. Gossip is an easy alternative to talking directly with the person and, and entering you know, into a relationship and love with them. So, why is gossip so wrong? The golden rule. You wouldn't want others doing it. It's judging. It's an attempt to put other people in a bad light in hopes of looking better by comparison. Which, when you say it that way, it does sound kind of shallow. Also, it divides. Gossip divides. It divides people. It divides relationships. It divides the church. Um, Proverbs 16, 28 says that a, first, a perverse person stirs up conflict. A gossip separates close friends. A gossip comes and separates close friends. It divides. In verse tw uh, Proverbs 26, verse 20, it says, Without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip quarrel dies down. And the contemporary English version says it just a little differently. Where there's no fuel, a fire goes out. Where there's no gossip, arguments come to an end. Um, think about church splits. What always happens before there's church splits? It's not pretty. There's a group of people over here talking. There's a group of people over here talking about each other. Uh, they're talking about the pastor or who or whatever. There's all this gossip going on and church had a zero tolerance policy, if all the people within a church had a zero tolerance policy on gossip, then these issues would be dealt with directly in love and not 
in all these inappropriate ways. So Satan loves gossip because it divides us. And he likes to have the church divided. And even a church that's still together and there's gossip going on and we're talking about each other, we're not we're, we're, we're divided, we're not going in the same direction, so we're not unified against Satan and what he's doing. Um, sort of take a pause. We're going to have some time at the end where you're welcome to, um, to share. But right now, anything to add on specifically what we've just talked about? Any thoughts so far on what we talked about, about gossip? the conversation, you're welcome to join in. No, it's fine. All right, we'll have some time at the end. Um, quite interesting, ran across, uh, when we were doing Daily Bread Devotions, an article called, or a Daily Bread Devotion called Zero Tolerance. And it starts out, when Shayla McKnight applied for a job at an online printing company, she was surprised to learn that the company had a zero tolerance policy for gossip. The employees are encouraged to confront one another instead of gossip, and uh, if they're caught gossiping, they'll be reprimanded and fired. She was shocked because every job she'd ever had, there was a lot of gossip. So, and I went and found one of the source articles for this, which is a New York Times article. I'll give you a little bit more out of that, where this lady, Shayla McKnight, is sharing. Um, she said the human resources manager interviewed her, mentioned the company's no possible no gossip policy, and uh, said something like this, there's no backstabbing here, no office politics, gossip and talking behind someone's back are not tolerated. I don't, I don't get the impression this was a Christian company. It was a wise company. Um, she signed the company's agreement to values and remembered feeling optimistic, and she said it made a tremendous difference in the workplace. She goes on, goes on to talk about other workplaces, but then continues... In her current workplace, if we ever sense that someone might be gossiping, we call that person out. And we say, you need to go to the source if you have a question. She says, I care about my colleagues, but I don't, but there's things I don't need to know. She said, I also found that if people know that you don't gossip and that you don't tolerate it, they won't gossip around you. She says, it's normal to have an unkind thought about a coworker, but it's a choice whether or not you actually say it. At the end, she says, we respect one another's privacy here. And it was obvious to me last year after I told a few people that I was expecting my first child. When I reached sixth or seventh month, I passed a colleague in the hall whom I see every day. He glanced at my belly and asked if I was pregnant. Yeah, I think, I said. <laughs> he had no idea. His colleagues had not spread the word. The uh, Daily Bread goes on to say, long before this kind of policy was ever implemented by the company, God spoke of his own zero-tolerance policy for gossip and slander among his people, which is what we read in Leviticus a little bit ago. <clears throat> Solomon, and I like this, it sums up all the little points in the Proverbs. Solomon said that speaking badly of others could have disastrous effects. It betrays confidence. It separates close friends. It shames you and saddles you with a bad reputation. And it perpetually fuels the embers of a quarrel. People can rarely undo the damage that their words have done to a neighbor. Ben Franklin, I was impressed, um, when he was 20 years old, so this was written in 1726, he said, you know, when someone sits down to write, they need to list out what they're going to talk about and sort of get organized. And he says, for my life, I need to put some things in order that I need to do. There's about five things. One was pay off his debts, but number five or so was, this is a 20-year-old speaking, I resolved to speak ill of no man whatever, not even in a matter of truth, but rather by some means excuse the faults that I hear charged against others, and upon proper occasions speak all the good I know of everybody. Wow. That was what he had started to set in motion as a plan for his life. Well, today's New Year's Day, and uh, I know we're not big on making New Year's resolutions. Most of those get broken early in January anyway. But i um, just wondering if anybody wants to join me in making your own zero-tolerance policy for gossip in your own life. Uh, Burkett, can you bring up Ephesians 4 again? Ephesians 4, 29 to 30. 
Let, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ and God forgave you. So right in the beginning it says, do not let any unwholesome talk. There's zero tolerance. But only, there's zero tolerance, what is helpful. Only what is helpful. And actually as I'm studying this, I'm realizing it's not just gossip. It's other things. It's joking around and putting somebody down directly or joking with them. Was that helpful, Daryl? No, that was not helpful. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. No unwholesome thing, only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Um, and Ben Franklin, or he, yeah, Ben Franklin just mentioned, um, he would try to excuse the faults of others. And one person I was talking to talked about love covering over a multitude of sins and how they would appreciate it if they do something or say something, if their friends would help cover that, protect them. You know, be, I got your back, I'm with you. Rather than exposing them, shaming them. Um, so that caused me to pull out 1 Peter 4, 8-11. to He writes, The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and sober so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have, whatever gift you've received, to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should speak as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So, as I was talking to the pastors, I asked some questions, and I want to sort of summarize some of what I learned. Um, what do you do when? So, okay, maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're realizing that you really want to... Um, have a zero tolerance policy for gossip in your life, you're going to be confronted with different situations. So what do you do when you realize you've gossiped, you crossed the line, maybe after the conversation that's over, you go away and you realize, oh rats, I shouldn't have said that. Well, if the person you, you may want to consider going and confessing, if the person you talked about doesn't know about it, it probably wouldn't be helpful to go tell them that you were talking about, and that's only going to stir things up. But you might consider going to the person with whom you gossiped. Don't put it on them, but own it for yourself and just say, I'm not comfortable with what I shared. I'm not comfortable, and I would appreciate you didn't pass that information on. But make it about yourself and don't try to shame them or don't, don't allow yourself to bring, you know, put it on them. Um, if the person you gossip about does find out about it, you want to go talk to them confess and ask their forgiveness. And one person said, you do that a couple times, you'll change. <laughs> if someone is trying to get information from you, um, try to change the subject. That's the gentlest way to do it, just gently change the subject and move it away. Um, if they won't change the subject, they're still trying to pump you for information, uh, one friend says that what they reply is, that's not my story to tell. Why don't you go ask them? And that usually takes care of it. Um, or simply say, I'm not comfortable talking about this because I wouldn't want others to talk about me. Again, that's if you can't change the subject gently. A couple other options. Um, if someone's gossiping to you, and this is where I've been guilty of just allowing it to happen. And that <coughs> encourages it, and I'm participating in it. If someone's gossiping to you, again, try to gently change the subject. You know, they want to talk about somebody else, you can gently try to change the subject. Inside, you might be wanting to let them talk, but you're 
you're going to change the subject anyway. Um, but have a ready response. Just sort of have something ready that you know you'll say if someone's got to speak to you that without shaming the person who's talking, without making it about them, you can simply have a response ready. Um, say, I'm not comfortable talking about this. And obviously it depends a little bit on the relationship you have with that person. Collect, correct, confronted her close friend pretty directly. Um, so it can, your response can vary by how close you are. Next question I threw out. This is an angle that you might not think about right away, but is it okay to share with your spouse what you've heard? Um, marriage relationship is a little different. Some marriages have a policy. Everything I know, my spouse knows, the two are one. Um, so anything I know, my spouse will, will hear about. Um, in asking this, you know, some said it's kind of a tricky situation because you may have conflicting values. You have the need for transparency with your spouse, but also for guarding uh, confidentiality with the person who um, talked to you. And again, we're talking about pastors here. Um, said that if the conversation has any bearing on your marriage, share it with your spouse. If withholding the info would have any negative impact on your marriage, share it with your spouse. Um, one person shared the problem solution principle would still apply in, in their perspective. If the spouse is part of the problem, part of the solution, then I would talk to them about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't necessarily think that I would need to. Um, maybe it's a matter of heart. Are you wanting to just pass on information and say, hey, honey, guess what I just heard? Or are you working with somebody and you sort of need help in processing what you're, how you're going to respond and how you're going to you know, maybe um, work through that situation? In which case, your spouse is your confidant and your advisor, and so you want to share it. I think the best thing I heard or to sort of tie this all together, is whatever your personal uh, rule of thumb would be within your marriage, if someone is, especially when you're having a close relationship with someone, and they're going to be sharing things with you, let them know what your position is. Just let them know, just by the way, anything that we talk about, I'm going to talk about with my spouse. That way they have the option of sharing how much they want to share, knowing that in advance. I thought that was very wise. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess I'd like to open it up again. Any thoughts? Um, any response on uh, what we've talked about so far? Yes, Preston. I think it becomes increasingly difficult to see it in this culture because a lot of what we consider news today, you know, you look at entertainment news or sports news or even political, you know, well, guess who did what? Guess who did what? really turn the idea of sharing that information into the fact that it's, it's news, and we have so much access to news all the time that it's just a natural thing to say, hey, here's what the news of the day is. It's not gossip, it's not wrong, it's what everybody, that's what news is, it's just sharing whatever, you know, sort of happens. I think it's maybe even harder today to sort of sometimes tune out the noise and realize what you're doing, or even the fact that you're often participating in it in ways that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Anything else? I guess I was thinking when you were sharing, <coughs> you had to pass the things of a lot of on the gossip end of what you know, if it was confidential things or whatever. But if you're in the workplace or talking to a neighbor or whatever, and you're picking up that gossip. If you bring it home, you're just still spreading that gossip. Like you said, unless it directly affects you, but more than likely if you're picking up something that someone's saying about mm -hmm. somebody out there, it's probably still gossip, you know, passing that gossip. Okay. Yeah, and that, that whole marriage relationship thing, I think is something that each, you know, each couple needs to, each person needs to have their own understanding, and I don't know, thinking that I can come and lay, you know, lay that out, but that's a good point. You're just coming home and sharing gossip with your spouse. Might not need to be shared. Anything else? I'm not worried about the dead air. We can cut it out later if we need to.
Okay. I um, guess I'm going to close with um, a little poem that I found as I was... You know what? I'm going to back up a second. Challenge us one step further. Um, and this is um, something that maybe we don't recognize. What, what I've heard a lot of good people do sometimes is talk about the Amish. Whether it be an individual Amish person, a group of Amish people, or the Amish in general. The Amish are like this, the Amish do this. Um, and we don't often recognize that that would be gossip. Especially if you're talking about an individual person, an individual situation. Um, it seems like maybe because our cultures are sort of removed, it's kind of easy to do that. There's not that much connection. But I would throw that out for your consideration and, and to challenge you and to challenge myself going forward to think to myself, is it helpful? Is what I'm saying about my Amish community helpful? And uh, to keep that in mind. Can I, can I say something? Yes. I think sometimes uh, when we're in a group, small group, and if we're praying, um, <clears throat> sometimes we'll bring up something like we'll be praying and we'll bring up all this information that really not necessarily everybody knows. It's, it's, it's almost a form of it's almost a form of gossip in the sense that you're bringing out stuff and God already knows all this stuff mm -hmm. and you're doing it in the name of praying but really um, if it's not you, know, you can do that by yourself you, you don't have to really bring it out and so maybe some Christians might think they're not gossiping, but really, in, in, the, in the sense it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sharing prayer requests with friends is something you need to be careful about. Um, and it could come up in a, in a prayer group setting, or it could be an individual. You know, we really need to be praying for John. I hear he's not doing so well in his marriage. Well... That's gossip. That was not. Joe is cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So, good point. Anything else? Still open. You just, um, when you said about the Amish, I can remember, um, and it sparked just when I first came to the valley, and there was someone who had problems with somebody else. You know, so they were always saying, this person was this way, or this person was that way, and all those things. And you really have to work through that kind of thing if someone start spraying these things out about the person because when I really finally got to know the person and, and build a relationship, I really liked the person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But so gossip sometimes can <coughs> want to taint sure. our ability to mm -hmm. form a relationship with someone because yeah. of all the negative things okay. that often go with gossip. Gossip builds walls and it divides. I would also say that it's probably more than just Amish. It's almost any group of people that you don't know or you just observe you're not part of. 